Spread it like. Okay, uh, so today we're going to talk about object pooling. Uh, object pooling is a way that you can uh, create objects in your game world that is less taxing to the CPU. So when you're creating things in a game, um, there's kind of two things at work. There's the CPU, the central processing unit, and the GPU, the graphics processing unit. The CPU handles um, most of the math um, and actually creating the object. The GPU handles rendering the object in the scene, so actually making the object look how it's supposed to look, have shine or bloom or whatever effects you add to it. But the CPU creates and destroys the object. And there's two commands in Unity that are specifically taxing to the CPU if you call them over and over again. And those two commands are instantiate and destroy. If you're only calling it a few times, um, you know, every second or so, it's not such a huge deal. But if you're calling it again and again and again and again, and it's something that needs to be created and destroyed over and over again, the CPU gets taxed by that. And you might see even a simple game start to slow down depending on what hardware you're running it on. So what we're going to do is because we're going to be creating and destroying these bricks here, uh, we're going to create an object pool and we're going to have the object pool at the beginning of the game create a set number of bricks. Um, and those bricks are going to be, when they're destroyed, they're not actually going to be removed from the game scene. Instead, they're just going to be turned inactive. And then when a new brick gets created, it's actually just taking one of the old bricks that was just destroyed or just set inactive and setting that active again. So there's a few things we're going to have to do here. Uh, first, let's take a look at our assets folder here and let's create some prefabs out of the bricks that we already have. So I'm going to go to my assets folder uh, in my hierarchy here and I'm going to right click in the assets folder and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this uh, prefabs. You don't have to have a separate folder for your prefabs. You could just put your prefabs in any of these folders. Um, however, it's good to keep things organized and to have a specific folder for your prefabs. That's generally the workflow that most people do. So I'm going to create a prefab out of the triangle brick and the square brick from last time. So I'm going to pull the triangle brick into this prefabs folder. And you'll see once I do that, it turns kind of this bluish color. And I'm going to do the same thing with the square brick. I'm going to pull the square brick into that prefabs folder. Now that means that Unity has a prototype version of those, and whenever it creates a new one, it's actually going to create one from, or we can make it so that it creates one from the prefab folder. So since those are prefabs now, I can actually delete them from the scene. So I'm going to just delete those, and now I've got these prefabs set in here. The next thing I'm going to do really quickly is I'm going to set the place for the bricks to be spawning at. So if you'll notice, I set everything to be um, set up so that it's uh, unit by unit by unit. My camera here actually doesn't quite go as many units over as I want it to. It goes like two units and a tiny little bit, and then two units and a tiny little bit. I want it to go a full three units over here and a full three units over there. So I'm going to go to my main camera. I'm going to change my size to, let's say, 6. No, nope, that's too big. Let's go, oops. 5, 5.4, 5.3. How is that? That's still not quite. Let's go 5.4. Now, by doing that, I kind of messed things up down here. Um, I made it so that screen position. Oh, okay. Don't worry about that. I made it so that um, if I look down here at my game view, I can now see white underneath it and my uh, um, my little ground blocks aren't quite where they should be. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate a few of these. Uh, make sure that I have the move tool active. Hold down controls control or command on a Mac and just move that one over one so that I can have these kind of off to the edges there. Then I'm also going to uh, choose all of these grass and I'm just going to move them down a little bit. Just right there. 
I'm also going to move my ball down a little bit. Now, if I hit play, everything should work as it's supposed to. Okay, so I can still control the ball. Now I've got a little bit of white at the top of the screen. I can fix that though. So I'm going to grab my background here and I'm going to resize it just a little bit on the Y axis. So I'll make it 1.2 on Y. And that makes it so that everything's covered. All right, cool. Now the reason I went through all that trouble is because I want to be able to have these blocks as references. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move up towards the top of the screen where the camera is going to cover. And so that I can see that, I'm actually going to turn my background off for a second. OK, so in the actual game itself, it leaves it always leaves some space between the blocks on the top of the screen because it's really cool when your blocks can bounce around up there. So I'm going to do the same thing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create reference positions for the blocks to be able to spawn on. And they won't always spawn on every reference position, but it'll choose a certain number of those reference positions at random. And that's where it'll spawn. And I'm going to start with this row right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an empty game object. So over here in my um, main view, my hierarchy, I'm going to right click. I'm going to create an empty object. And it comes up as game object. And I'm going to call this uh, spawn point one. So this will be the first spawn point. So I can place this manually if I want to, but I won't be super accurate. I want this to be exactly in the middle of that block right here. So to do that, I'm going to use my transform of that position. I'm going to set it to negative 2.5, and I'm going to set it to positive 3.5. And that puts it directly in the middle. The other thing, if I click away from the spawn point, I can't see it anymore. So to make it so that I can actually see it in the scene view, I'm going to highlight my spawn point. And then next to the name here, there's this little colored block. I'm going to click that. I'm going to choose an icon for it. If you choose one of these, it will include the name of the object. And if you choose one of these, it'll just put a dot or a diamond where the object's supposed to be. So I'm just going to choose a gray dot. And now if I click away from it, I can click back to it. But you don't actually see it in the game world. All right. So I'm going to duplicate this. So Command-D on a Mac or Control-D on a Windows computer and hold down control, and I'm just going to move it over one unit. I'm also going to verify that its transform is exactly one unit over. And I'm going to change its name to spawn point two. And then I'm going to duplicate that, move that one unit over, verify that it's one unit over, change its name to spawn point three, duplicate that, and I'm just going to continue this until I have a spawn point for each of these. So Command-D or Control-D to duplicate, and then hold down Command or Control to move it by exactly one unit. So one more. And I'm going to call this spawn point six. OK. Now, what I'm going to do is, because this is kind of cluttering up my hierarchy, is I'm going to create another empty game object. Create empty. And I'm just going to call this spawn points. And this is just going to hold all of my spawn points so they're not cluttering up my hierarchy. So shift to select all of them and put them right in there. And I'm going to collapse that. Now things are a lot neater. I can still go to whichever spawn point I want to by clicking it in the scene view. OK. So uh, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a game manager. 